the world once known as Earth. The fires were dying out. There was nothing left to burn. The great forests that had swept across the planet like a tidal wave with the passing of the cities were now no more than a glowing charcoal. And the smoke of their funeral pyres still stained the sky. The continents were dimly visible through the haze, but their outlines meant nothing to the watchers in the approaching ship. The charts they possessed were out of date by a dozen ice ages, but still they pressed on at maximum speed toward the dying planet. Enter. Captain. Rogan, come in. I've been expecting you. You're absolutely certain about this, Alvaron? I've confirmed twice with base. I've even talked to the observatory at Kulath. They've made some additional calculations on their own. Exactly what should I tell the crew? I'll tell them. Oh, they should know that the ship has just made its last voyage. Alvaron will be lucky to make it back to base on our own power. I know. The engines have been on maximum overload for over 60 hours. Mm. What does our time frame look like? Well, we're just approaching atmosphere of the third planet now. According to Kulath, their sun will detonate in five hours with an uncertainty of one hour, which leaves us only two hours for a rescue. Alvaron, how do they... That's all we've got. When their sun explodes, it'll destroy seven planets. And we've just found out there's a civilization on the third. It was only hours ago that Kulath discovered radio waves coming from the solar system. And in five hours, it all ends. Yes. Ah, there go Torkoli and Horstron. They've each got a probe and a three-man crew. They'll explore different parts of the planet. But if they find a population down there... We'll land and save who we can in what time we have left. But we leave in two hours with or without them. Captain, we have visual contact with the planet. I look at it here. Look. Look at that. Planet in its last hours. Look at the cloud patterns. The elements must be in turmoil. It's being baked alive by a sun about to become a dwarf star. And all we can do is wait. Not necessary. Let's talk to Torquil. Galactic survey to probe one. S-9000 to probe one. Do you read me? This is Captain Alvaron to Commander Torto. Do you hear me? Captain, we hear you. The atmosphere is causing a lot of interference. What do you see down there? We're on the twilight side of the planet. It's just coming up on what looks like an inland sea with a city. You have your orders, Torto. Stay with your ship while your men explore and keep in constant contact with us. You have less than two hours. Run out. All right, Senator. I'm setting us down in the square near those flying machines. The city looks fairly new, Torkoli. Certainly within the last three or four centuries. Allocating your race is among the youngest in the universe. What do you think? Yes, Senator. I'd say the city is quite new. And this inland sea is also new. This race must have created it to support the populace. And do you agree, Palador? We agree, Alakane. We? <laughs> We've never worked with a Paladorian before. They always say we because they have no personal identity. Palador is a cell linked together mentally with other cells spread all over the galaxy. But he really doesn't even have his own name. We're studying well. <laughs> Quickly, into the airlock. Double check your suits and gear. I'm pressurizing. You're all set. Symmetry. 
chain, follow door. Good luck. On my planet, there is no such thing as luck, good or bad. I'm opening the door. <laughs> Synetry. There are lights shining from some of the windows. There are no apparent forms of life in the area. There's nothing moving. Maybe not, but I believe we are being watched. Those are cameras on the roof, see? Some sort of vision cameras. And they must know we've come to rescue them. Synetry, this is the largest building. We should begin here. I agree. Let's... Door won't budge. Some sort of locking mechanism. It could take hours to get this door open. We only have minutes, allocated. Commander Torkoli, this is Symmetry. Go ahead. We're unable to open the main door. Can you blast a hole in it from where you are? I think so. Clear the area for ten meters. Quickly, get back. It's a great hall of some kind. Must have been an important building. There's at least a dozen corridors. Well, this one's as good as any. Let's see what's down here. Citadry, where are you? We're just entering a large room. Seems to have rows and rows of machines. Kind of I guess some sort of information retrieval system. They are old-style computers. We have seen these on other worlds, used hundreds of centuries ago. But we are amazed at the number of units here. Commander, look here. These are some sort of magnetic storage disks. There are millions of them. Thousands of millions. Look, as far as the eye can see. Too bad we don't have time for research. We can learn much from these records. Come on, there's another room beyond this one. Books. Millions of books. On miles of shelves. Great library. There are signs of recent life here. Footprints. Which way do they lead? Impossible to tell without knowing how many legs this race has. After all, you have 20 yourself when you feel like using them. Bipeds. What? They were bipeds. With only two arms, according to the photographs in this book. They seem to have managed well in spite of that handicap. This is what they look like. Only two eyes as well. We are amused. Look at this aisle. Someone has knocked over books and a whole row of them are missing. Someone must have hastily tried to save them, probably at the last minute. That could mean a refuge nearby. That may be, Alarcane, but the refuge could be anywhere on the planet. We have less than two hours left. We can't waste any more time here. Let's go. We are taking a few of these books back. We think they may be useful to our scientists if we can translate them. Commander, what do you make of this? Some kind of office. Yes. What's that sound? It's wind blowing through the broken window. It's wrecked. The furniture's all smashed. Do you think an animal could have done this? Do you think it could have got in? <laughs> no animal did this. In fact, the explanation is very simple care to enlighten us? Well, suppose you had been working all your life in this room, 
dealing with endless paperwork year after year, and suddenly you are told that you will never see any of it again, ever, and that your work is done, and that you can leave it. Everything is suddenly finished and no one cares. How would you make your exit, Sinadry? Well, I suppose I'd just tidy up and leave. <laughs> I'm quite sure you would. But some individuals have a different psychology. I think I should have liked that creature that used this room. Sinadry, come in. This is Sinadry. We're losing time. Get back to the ship and let's move on. We're on our way. Let's go. We have given this building some thought, Sinadre, and we believe that this was a great storehouse of information on the inhabitants of this planet. What sort of information, Palador? Births, deaths, laws, philosophy. If we were allowed to collect some of the... Wait a minute. Look at this passageway. It slopes down. Let's go down to a lower floor. No. Deeper than that. It leads down into the ground. Into the depths of the earth. Of course. It's where everyone is. Torkoli, come in. What is it? Fix in on our present location and bring the ship directly overhead. We found a large passageway and we may need you to blast your way through to find us if we lose our way. We're checking it out now. I hope you're right. Let's go. This passageway was built for a speedy descent. There are no steps to stumble over. We notice that the architectural styling is also quite different from the rest of the building. As if beings of great importance used this tunnel. This is where it stops. We're in some sort of cylinder. how thickly they're padded. It's all rather ornate looking, beyond merely functional. Palador, what do you think this is? The door. It, it won't open. That's the only way out. Whatever they were, they knew how to build automatic machinery. Welcome. Choose your stations, please. And be seated. We think it would be best to be seated. Look over here. I'm a map and a series of buttons. Do you think... Don't they... touch them. Don't touch anything. If we leave the controls alone, the door may open again. We think not, Sinadre. We notice a definite vibration increasing. We are moving very rapidly now. Palador's right. We are moving. We can't be moving. We don't have time for this. The main ship leaves the solar system in less than 20 minutes. Sinadre, come here. Torkoli, listen very carefully. We're trapped in some sort of cylinder that appears to be moving away from the city. We're not sure how to stop it. I know that. I've been monitoring you. I'm already flying above you matching your speed and direction. You may not know it, but you're traveling at nearly a thousand miles an hour. That fact is amazing, considering we are experiencing very little noise and mechanical vibration. Listen to me. There is very little time left. What do you propose? There's no telling what will happen if we try to operate the controls. Sinadry, you're approaching the coast. You've got to try and stop the machine before you go out under the ocean. That's your only hope of rescue. I hear you. Sinadry, listen. We're trapped. We can't get out. And in a few minutes, the sun will turn every ounce of matter in this solar system into vapor. The only hope we possibly have is to stop this machine right now. Allocane states the facts correctly, Sinadry. All right. I'm going to press one of these buttons. We have no other choice. That seems appropriate. Which one? I don't know. Sinatry, hurry, please. I'm pressing this one. There. Nothing. Nothing happened. Just passed underneath the city and are heading out to sea. There could not possibly be another stop for nearly a thousand miles. I'm sorry. But there must be a way. Sinatry. There is no hope now. None. Not since the days when the earth was born 
had there been a scene as terrifying as this. Mountains of water raced before the storm, which now reached unheard of velocities. The air was full of flying debris of all kinds. Trees, fragments of houses, sheet metal, anything that was not anchored to the ground. And ever and again, even the roar of the wind was drowned as the vast water mountains met head-on with a crash that seemed to shake the sky. Yet, far beneath the bed of the ocean, the vacuum subway that had once belonged to the world president sped along, unaffected by the destruction above. Senator Annie, we perceive that you and Alarcane are making certain arrangements concerning your anticipated destruction. That will probably be unnecessary. What? Captain Alvaron in the main ship hopes to rescue us, if we can stop this machine when we reach land again. How do you know that? We are also on the main ship. Of course. He's in constant touch with the other Palatorians on the S-9000. He knows their every thought just as they know his. But there's no time. Alvron would never take such a risk. There will be no risk. We have told him what to do. It is really very simple. Senadry, this is Alvaron. Torkel, and the probe have returned to the main ship, but we are staying on this planet until the detonation wave from the sun reaches it. So we may be able to rescue you. How can you do that? It depends on you stopping that machine when you reach the first city on the coast. If you can, our engineers can blast through the rock and sink a shaft to get you out. But if the sun explodes... Our main engines go on automatically at the first sign of detonation. There's no time to explain. Just stop that machine. You're just about to the city. The captain is right, Sir We have given this our combined thought, and our logic is flawless. Push the button, Senator. We have nothing to lose now. Alvaron, I'm pushing the second button now. That did it. We're stopping. Thank you. Please exit to the right. Quick, let's get out of here. Now which way? It's a long tunnel. We believe there is no need to find an exit, Alarcain. Stay where you are. We're going to blast through. Everybody against the machine. Here they come. Look at that. A shaft straight up to the surface. It must be a hundred mile an hour wind up there. Senator this is Torkley. I hear you. I'm on my way to get you. You'll be safe in the main ship in five minutes. Hang on. Cindy, Alarcain, Palador, welcome back. I'm glad to see Commander Tolkien got you back in time. But our rescue attempts failed. We did what we could. So no one else could have possibly gotten here in time. What of Orostron's team? They found nothing. Only an abandoned communication station. Switch on the main viewer. We're very close to detonation. Give me a view of the planet's surface. Look at that. The ocean is covering the land masses. What's that light? It's night on this side of the planet. The moon is reflecting the sun. Our main drive is kicked off. We're at light speed. Give us a view of the sun. There it goes. Engineering reports there's no possibility of repairing the engines. And it'll be 
three weeks before a rescue ship can reach us. I'm afraid this ship's done for. Captain? Hmm. Oh, oh, sorry, Ruka. I was just thinking about the world that perished. Mm. A few days ago, we were the rescuers going to aid a race that now no longer exists. I wonder what they were like in their glory. With the cities thronging with life, they have offered much to the universe. Oh, if only we could make contact. Well, are we steady on the new course? Yes. We've been directly following the transmissions from the planet for two days now. Good. We've been viewing the images from over a hundred cameras. They had them set up in a panorama to show the moment of destruction. Here, I'll show you what we've decoded. This is a view of the city Torkoli explored just moments before the wave from their sun hit it. Oh, fascinating. Now watch, watch. Here comes the wave. Yes. And, of course, the transmission ends at this point. Along with the planet. Now, Ron, someone went to a lot of trouble to set up those cameras and the relay station. I just can't believe they turned on their cameras and just... Crawled into a cave somewhere to die. Rugan, this is control. What is it? We're picking up something on our long range scanners. You'd better have a look. Put it on the viewer in here. What do you make of it? Difficult to say. It looks like a distant nebula. Perhaps. Control, this is Rugan. Extreme magnification. A dense star field? Hmm. Those are not stars, Alvaron. Those... Those are rockets. Thousands of them. This is the race that has known radio for only two centuries. The race that we believed had crept away to die in the heart of its planet. That is the greatest fleet of which there has ever been a record. Thousands of ships with rocket engines. Yes, and each ship larger than our own. They dare to use primitive rockets to bridge interstellar space? Precisely. It would have taken them centuries to reach the nearest star. The whole race must have embarked on this journey in the hope that, that its descendants would complete it generations later. Could we have done so much in so short a time? All this from the youngest civilization in the universe. They're going to have quite a surprise when I send Torquil to meet them. I suspect it will be a blow to their pride. Mm. Funny how all isolated races think they're the only people in the universe. Well, once the rescue ship gets here, we'll be saving them a good many centuries of travel. Something tells me they'll be very determined people. We'd better be polite. After all, we only outnumber them about a thousand million to one. At least. I wonder what they'll accomplish in a million years. I wonder what they'll accomplish in 20 years.